Hello, everybody. John, thanks so much for joining us today. My pleasure. How are you? I'm very good. Is it true that you had to give all of those people in the video a black card in order to get them to say those <laughs> wonderful things about you? No. no, I think some of them already had a couple of black cards. But, <laughs> I think so. Uh, no, we didn't bribe any of them. Very so. good, very good. Uh, so I wanted to start off by asking, you know, as the CEO of, of American Express, uh, you know, there's a lot of places in the world you could be, I'm sure, at any given moment. Uh, why, why come to me them? Well, you know, the music industry, I think as the video begins to demonstrate, the, the, the music industry for us is so vitally important. And it really starts with the fact that our customers have a passion for music. Um, you know, we started back in the late 80s offering certain card members early access, you know, to certain concerts. And that was just the, the tip of the iceberg. And since that time, we've found that, you know, 40% of our card member base actually has engaged in the music events or the entertainment events that we've, that we've done. That's, so, a, that's an astounding amount of engagement. Yeah. You have, I think you have 102 million global card holders. So right. 40%, I, mean, I don't know that that's apples to apples, 40% of 100 million, but that, that, that would seem to be it's a very- a big number. It's a big number. That's it's a very a encouraging number. number for the music industry that 40% of a general population are all spending money in a meaningful way on music. That's right. And, and the way we approach it is not, you know, what we don't do is look to just slap a sponsorship on a, on a festival. Uh, that's just not our interest. Uh, you know, most people in the world are aware of American Express. What we try to do is create unique experiences, heighten the experience, whether it's what we do streaming or what we do live, um, and really try to make music even that much more special for those card members. How many, um, how many tickets are you guys selling a year at this point? Well, we have, um, in, t in the total uh, entertainment events area, is about 4 million. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, the international number is growing by about 50% a year. So we're seeing strong growth globally. We've got a global footprint so we can support these programs on a, on a worldwide basis. And then uh, in the U.S., we've been doing it for quite some time, we have a number of programs where we help ticket sales. So. I just said four million from, a, from an event standpoint. But even if you look at what we've done with uh, Ticketmaster, we've, uh, we launched a program a couple of years ago where our customers can buy music tickets with their rewards points on Ticketmaster. And last year, we redeemed over a billion points for these event tickets on Ticketmaster. It was over two million tickets. Um, just on the rewards program alone. So, you know, we're able to, you know, and that's give real our revenue customers. for the music business. I mean, you're just buying, you're buying those tickets. We're buying from the, the tickets. Yeah. They're still getting the revenue. Yeah. We're just doing it uh, for our customers via rewards. Yeah. So why is this, um, why is this an important area for American Express? I mean, it's the music business certainly appreciates it, but why is it, uh, why is it useful to American Express to be engaged in this sort of a way? What are you guys getting from this? Well, as I mentioned earlier, I mean, it starts with the fact that. We've got so many of our card members, our customers who love music. But you know, what we found is that if you look at the customers who have you know, experienced one of the musical events that we've offered them versus customers who look just like those folks but haven't experienced it, the spend level on the card is about three times the, for, for those folks who have been part of one of the music events and music experiences that we've offered. So, you know, you've got a situation where, you know, our business is based on getting our customers engaged, building loyalty with them, and building a relationship, and it ultimately results in them spending a lot more money on the card. That's a great, that's a great business proposition for us. Yeah. And, you know, as I said, we've been doing this for over two decades, and we've seen those results consistently which reinforces the fact that we're doing the right thing. Absolutely. Do you pay attention? I mean, you guys, I think it's safe to say, and I apologize if it's not, but I think it's safe to say that you guys kind of uh, led the way in creating these sort of customer programs, you know, in terms of uh, creating rewards, but not rewards necessarily, but in terms of creating um, programs where your card members could, you know, buy concert tickets early and things like that. 
Uh, do you, is it important you to distinguish yourself, because now certainly there's other cards out there that are, that are offering these kinds of programs. Is it important to you to distinguish yourself and how do you distinguish yourself from some of these other programs out there? Well, you know, one of the most important ways for us to distinguish ourselves is to be part of the industries where we're, we're offering our customers access, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, if you look at how we do business in music, and I think the significance of that video is that the way we start a conversation is to, to find out what does that partner want out of the relationship? You know, we, we are not, our approach is not to walk in with a sack full of cash and say, hey, we want to buy our way in to a program, a tour, or whatever else. It just, that just doesn't interest us. What we do is we say, okay, what are your objectives? You know, are, are ticket sales an issue? We can help you drive ticket sales. Um, is, is it uh, about album sales? There's things we can do to drive album sales. It's about understanding and driving businesses together. And what we've learned over the, the, the 18 years I've been doing this, and I have a great team uh, headquartered in, in New York who have uh, focused on this, and what they've done is consistently helped businesses grow. And once you do that, we find it's a great partnership. What we don't work well with is short-term tactics. You know, mm -hmm. somebody says, hey, next week we're gonna do X, you wanna do it with us? No, not really. We're looking for the projects that allow us to really build business over time. Most of our competition hasn't taken that approach to the business. Um, and it takes time, it takes a level of commitment, it takes a team who love this industry and really want to work and build a relationship, a trust, a rapport. And that's the only way you can build something that has enough inventory that, that you can offer your customers a steady flow of opportunities. If you do a one-off program every once in a while, customers don't pay much attention. If you can start to provide them with you know, a steady flow of, of great opportunities, great experiences, they start to count on you, it becomes a much, much better business proposition. Where do the good ideas uh, generally come from? So you know, when you're sitting down and, and you're in conversations with, I don't know whether it's label heads or, or promoters or things like that, um, what is the dynamic of that conversation? Where have you generally uh, created the best opportunities? And where is there sometimes friction in trying to figure out how to get this to work? There's never friction. <laughs> no, no, it's the music business. It, <laughs> it wouldn't be possible. Um, I think that the, you know, from our standpoint, ideas have come from many, many places. Um, we do have you know, the opportunity for people to contact us. We do look for them to contact us, but, but we think there's gotta be a very clear way of approaching us, which is we wanna understand from a business standpoint what the, the individual, whether it's somebody producing something or somebody promoting something, what they're trying to accomplish. And you know, what, we, what we try to do is look for the long game and you know, we, don't get, you know, we don't look for the short hit. So you know, as they come to us, um, you know, we've had a number of conversations with promoters who have said, I've got this idea, I think it could be great. And we say, okay, let's talk about it a little bit, let's understand it. We like to experiment, so for example, unstaged, that came from experimentation, trying things. And what we do very quickly is we take the learning from those experiments, we stop doing the things that don't work, we keep going with the things that do. And so it's an iterative process. And the people who build a dialogue with us are the ones we work with. Is Onstaged a success? What did you learn from Onstaged? We've learned a lot. Uh, probably more than I could cover in 30 minutes, but sure. let me just try to top line sure. some of the things we've learned. Uh, it, it starts with the fact that we knew we had to go where customers are. We knew we had to, you know, our customers as it relates to music are spending a lot of time in the digital world. We said there's got to be an opportunity in that space. Um, the, the learning has been that if you first of all keep the creative integrity of the show by having the right director, bringing the music together in a useful and interesting way, you can actually do tremendous things and get a great following. Um, you know, we're getting, on average, um, about 25 minutes from each viewing. And uh, this year alone, we've had um, 22 million views. So, you know, we're seeing real numbers scale. And from our standpoint, that's important because unstaged for us is about, because we let, we let prospects, we let people who are not card members experience it. We want them to know what it feels like to be a card member. What does it feel like to get access to these great entertainment opportunities? And, and so that's how we justify it. And we certainly look at 
What happens after the show? Did we get the numbers? Are we getting some of those prospects coming in, interested in getting our card? So there's a number of things we look at from an ROI standpoint. So you keep doing Unstaged, so can Absolutely. we assume that it's a very successful program for you? For us, yeah, it really is. Yeah. There's a lot more we want to do with it. Um, I think that... And the key metric on that would be conversion rates. The key metric on that Absolutely. is like click-throughs and conversions. Click-through and conversions is yeah. one of the key measures. Um, we start with whether or not we got the views to begin sure. with to get the audience, uh, but you're right, the conversion is the key. Um, and as we look at it going forward, what we're experimenting with is we're looking for ways to make it even more interesting for the audience. How do we take the audience experience, which as you probably know, when it's in the digital sphere, you may be sitting there by yourself so you don't have that audience experience. How can we replicate that so you guys in must better be thinking, and better ways? You must be thinking a lot about second screen opportunities as you move second forward. Second screens, social platforms, things like that. How can we incorporate those things into Unstage to even further the, the experience? Because as you know, today, you know, we give that, that audience the opportunity to tweet the band and mm -hmm. to have some dialogue and interaction. But, but I think, you know, three years from now, we'll probably look back at what we're doing today and say it's somewhat quaint. Where are we going to go? How will we continue to build it is what the teams are looking at, dialoguing with a lot of different people, looking for new ideas and things that we can try to make it even more captivating. I want to talk a little bit about some of the other programs uh, that you, you guys have been involved with. Um, we talked about the scaled awareness of, of Unstaged. Um, you're selling albums also, I, I should say, through Unstaged? Yes. And this is a, obviously a great thing for the artists. These artists are doing it. You're including uh, links to iTunes, we free just, downloads. The, the last three Unstaged, we just started the links to uh, the iTunes downloads. Okay. Um, and those have produced about 10,000 downloads so far. So, so we're beginning to see, and again, this is, I mean, <laughs> This is real-time stuff for us. We're learning every step along the way. We're learning how to do this stuff. We're learning how it works. You know, and it's, it may seem obvious to some of the folks here in the audience that if you're going to have a great live show, why not give people the opportunity to download some of the music? But you know, we're learning how to do that, how to do it, you know, obviously, in, in the context of the industry. Mm -hmm. and, and does it work? So far, we're encouraged. We haven't pushed it too far. We, I take each step one at a time, but we're encouraged by the last three shows, and uh, we'll be announcing in the next uh, couple of weeks uh, a few more upcoming shows for, uh, for on stage. We usually do it around the time of, a, of an album launch or a tour launch, and so far, the feedback we've gotten from the industry is it's making a difference in terms of album sales and ticket sales. Is there any artist that you have dreamed of working with with on stage to this point that you just haven't been able to kind of quite get to the table yet in the right way that you want to you share your dreams? Wow. <laughs> That's a big question. Yeah. There's a lot of artists I, I, yeah. we'd love to work with. Um, but no, you're, I mean, people I, may not know this, but you're, you're a, a little bit of a closeted musician yourself. <laughs> this is true. You play guitar. Closet. Closet yeah. musician, yeah. Closet yeah. musician, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I do. You I, were saying I, you have a, there's an in-house band for American Express. We actually, the, the publishing, um, um, one of the groups that uh, reports into me is Amex Publishing. Yeah. And uh, uh, we've got a band that uh, gets together called Otherwise Employed. <laughs> and uh, and yeah. uh, the, the band is quite good. I'm not. But, uh, but uh, it's, it's been fun. From what I've been told, you're selling yourself a little bit short. But, um, but fair enough. The, the, you know, I think that there's a lot of bands that we're interested in working with. You know, we're trying to understand a couple of new things. Number one, how big does each show have to be? Yeah. Is every show need to have 15 to 20 million live streams or not? You know, um, how do we better manage the cost of putting on a show? And how does that work? So, you know, there's a lot of work that we're putting into, you know, managing that because the more we can manage that without affecting the creative integrity, the more shows we can do, the more we yeah. can ramp this up. So these are all the things we're experimenting. So not all the experiments are obvious. You know, when you're watching the show, you may not see all the things we're experimenting with. Clearly bringing in name directors, you know, and we've worked with so many great people. I mean, the John Legend show with, uh, with Spike Lee was just incredible. Yeah. Um, you know, what we, what we did with Terry Gilliam. And uh, the, the, bringing those folks in has brought a whole new dimension and interest level to the show. So, you, you know, I... I, I couldn't tell you who I'm waiting to do business with next because... You, you can if you'd like to. <laughs> you, 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 you can. We'll but. break some new, new names soon in the next couple of weeks, but we'd, uh, 
we have a little bit more work to do. I want to take a quick step back. How does uh, music fit into your uh, sort of broad marketing strategy for American Express? I mean, you've talked about some of it, but I mean, in a, in a sentence or two, what is it that you as a CMO of American Express are really trying to do? What is your most important mission and how does music tie in with it? Well, you know, about, about 15 years ago, I started a, a, a program inside the company which was really about taking marketing to a three-dimensional place. You know, my feeling was at 15 years ago that too much of marketing was two-dimensional. It was a page in a magazine. It was a, it was a commercial on a television. And a sponsorship on a tour yeah, stage. Yeah, sponsorship on a tour. It was just not very involving. And so what we started to do is redeploy dollars, some of those same marketing dollars, into what we called three-dimensional marketing. That's what we called it at first inside. And we said, we've got to create environments where we can create a feeling for people that this is what it means means to be a card member. Um, and membership is something that, you know, our customers hold on to very strongly. You know, many of them know their member since date that's on the card. And so we wanted to try to create more involvement, more engagement. And so we spent the time looking at three-dimensional, you know, um, events. And so some of the events we created ourselves, some of the events were musical events that were already taking place. And it was really about trying to understand how you market and build an environment and bring people into that environment and get them involved with the brand in a way that you just can't do in a two-dimensional. And, and do you find music must let you do this in uh, fairly targeted ways? I mean, if you want to reach an older demographic, you can use this kind of music. If you want to reach a younger demographic. Absolutely. When you think about, when we launched, we launched in 1999 the blue card, mm -hmm. okay? We wanted a much younger demographic. We were looking for a whole new group of people. We used music as the key signal to that, yeah. that, that happening. Um, and what we did was a live show in Central Park, as you may recall, yep. with Cheryl headlined, Cheryl Crow had yep. headlined, but we had everybody from Clapton to Chrissy Hind. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. And it was, uh, it, was a, it was a way to say to the audience, this is a new card, this is a new American Express for you, and music was the way we signaled it. You must have a, an incredible wealth of data that you're getting from your customers. You must have incredible insights into, uh, you know, if, if a customer buys this kind of music, then they might also do X, Y, and Z. Uh, can you talk a little bit about uh, what data you're seeing and what the data might be showing you? Yeah, I was going to talk about your musical tastes, actually, Bill. <laughs> Please um, don't. <laughs> the, what we do, obviously, everything we do with our data is aggregated. So, you know, we don't work with individual data. We work with sets and groups. But, you know, what we're able to, to, to see is whether or not somebody is truly passionate about music. And let me tell you why I say passionate. It's not just the amount of money they spend on music, whether it be downloads or tickets or events. It's how much they spend in relationship to all the other things they do in their life. So we don't just know the absolute numbers. We know whether or not, you know, you're spending a disproportionate amount of your spending in these areas. And it gives us an immense amount of information about where you like to go, how often you do it. Um, we, we know what you do around the event. You know, we know whether or not you, go, you went to dinner beforehand or afterwards. So we know that there's a lot of commerce opportunities around that lets you an event. tailor like the marketing opportunities back to the customers and then get exactly. create more engagement ultimately. Exactly right. We can we know that if they like going to dinner afterwards in a certain place in a certain city because that show brings the certain we can make sure we facilitate that. We can help our partners who are restaurants with that. So we look to take the data and really understand understand behaviors because our you know it's not we're not talking about perceptual information we're talking about real behaviors yep. and we take that information and use it to serve people better so is there any number understand. that's jumped out at you over the last like year or two that you just were either surprised or that was really striking or anything specific that you can share well you know yeah there's a couple of things first of all i'm i'm in awe of this group of people that we call our card members and the potency and power of them. You mentioned 102 million worldwide. Yeah. So first of all, it's that global footprint that is so interesting to work with because you can take one group of people worldwide and start to, to impact it. In, in doing my research, I saw that you guys sold out a Bon Jovi concert with one tweet. Yeah. So there's yeah. some real 
we sold it out in a matter of a couple of hours with yeah. one tweet. And uh, we did that just to experiment as to whether or not Twitter could sell out a show. And we, you know, we weren't necessarily skeptical. We just didn't know. It was an experiment. And we were impressed. We've been using Twitter ever since. Sure. Um, you know, the new channels like Twitter have been tremendous. You know, Twitter is a great one for, for moving, um, you know, tickets for us. Uh, iAds, you know, we've seen about an eight times the response rate on iAds versus general advertising. So we're seeing a great targeting capability there, um, which makes things more efficient. But let me just finish out on this, yep. this card member base. So, so this was one of, the, one of the things that happened that just impressed me so much about this group of people. Um, many of you will recall back in 2010, the horrific um, earthquake in Haiti, right? And when that happened, we, First, the first thing we did was we waived all our fees for anybody giving to charity on our cards. We wanted to be part of the solution. And as we did, we, were, um, we, we sent out a simple email to these card members and said, if you'd like to give to relief, you know, here's what you can do. Within eight weeks, our card members donated over $100 million to relief on the card. They also donated over 87 million membership rewards points to that effort. I don't know about you, but I don't know too many groups of people can be activated and have that much both you know, capability, but also you know, consciousness to, to take action. That's the group of people we're working with every day when we do these entertainment programs, that we, when we do ticket offerings, when we, and they're, they're very responsive, they're very active, and they're very involved. You were, I interrupted you though, you were gonna um, uh, talk a little bit about maybe some of the data points that had jumped out at you as you had looked at, uh, as, you're, as you're seeing these sort of trends or these patterns in, in customer usage as it relates to music. Is there anything that, that is particularly, um, you know, yeah. like the percentage well, of people that do, you know, buy dinner or the percent, anything that like really jumped out at you as nothing, striking? Nothing that I would say would, would, would blow you away. I mean, we see high correlations between entertainment and music and, and food. I mean, but these are the things that you would expect. Mm -hmm. You know, we see differences by city and where it really gets interesting for us when we're working on a marketing basis, because when we say, you know, we'll work with you as a partner, we have to be able to walk in and provide you with you know, a better result, and that's what we're working on. That's why I talk about, you know, learning from iAds and getting an 8x response yeah, on yeah. something like that, or how do you tweet to get a concert to move, or how do you help ticket sa or album sales with an unstaged. <laughs> we're working on trying to get that to work. We also look at things on a local basis. So, you know, things are very different in, um, in, in how things work in London versus Atlanta. And, and we understand <laughs> those customers, we understand how they respond, what they respond to. But no, there, I don't, couldn't give you a number, Bill, that would really, you know. The granularity just help you in, in terms of how you execute on a customer basis. It really does. You know, it, incredibly to me, we are, uh, we're out of time just about. I, I wanted to ask, you know, I think there's a lot of people who've come here today who probably have an interest in working with American Express. Uh, you said earlier, that you know, one of the things that doesn't really work is you know calling you up and saying, hey, you know, we've got this specific thing, and you've said you don't really like uh, necessarily to slap your logo on a on a festival or anything like that. But w what is it that you do like? What is it that uh, you would love to get out of uh, you know a bunch of people who are proactive and thinking about the business of music? Uh, and what's the best way to get that to you? Well, um, th the most important thing for us is we're looking for ideas that are consistent with the changes that are happening in the music business. And we're looking for opportunities that we can build with you. So, you know, as I said, if somebody brings me a short-term problem that says, you know, in, 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 a, in a week or a month, we're gonna, we're gonna go do this, and they're desperate for some cash to get it done, or they, they are looking at us to fund something only, I'm not, I'm not really interested in just a tactic. If you have an idea, if you have an idea on how we can better make the unstaged program work, and, and, and you, have a, you should have an agenda, you should have a reason why you want it to work better for your own business, we're happy then to, to enter into that dialogue. We want to understand what's in it for you. So we don't expect people to come to us with ideas and pretend there isn't something in it for them. We want to know what's in it for you because we want to make sure we deliver what you need and then we'll tell you, just as forthright, what we expect out of the relationship. And then we'll, we're gonna look for you to help us get 
the things we're, we're trying to get accomplished in the process. If we can enter that dialogue, then we have the opportunity to build something. We're just not good at, you know, very fast turnaround tactics. We're much better at building things that work. And I think, you know, again, I go back to the video for those of you who saw it earlier at the beginning. When those folks are talking about how we've worked with them, we've worked with most of the people you saw on that video for years because we've been building relationships with them. We play the long game, not the short game. There are other people in my category who will come in and put money on the table and say, I want to buy this. And if that's what you're looking for, please go to them. If you're looking for a way to build your business and help me build mine, I'm wide open and you can reach us. We're, we're redoing our site right now. We have a site that's americanexpress.com backslash proposal. It's a place where we get our proposals. It's not up today. <laughs> it should be up by mid-February. We reworked it because the user experience wasn't good enough. We were hearing back from a lot of folks who said, you guys are too tough to deal with. And we said, we've got to get this to be easier. In mid-February, it will be back up. And we would love to have a dialogue. The reason I came here to do this is to say, I want to have a dialogue with you. I want to work with more of you. This industry is important to us. And we'd love to hear what your ideas are. John, we've got to get your American Express house band to record a song and get it up on Billboard.biz. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much, John Hayes. Thank you. Thank you.